Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tea Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my magnificent melange uh, video for August. Um, over in Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook, we have these different um, themes each month, and this month it was hashtag Magnificent Melange. So you can go and look that hashtag up in your search bar, and you will find lots of different things from the contributing artist from Art Joy of Sharing. And basically, what Magnificent Melange is is just do what you want, show a technique. So what I'm doing is showing four different techniques for creating linear or grid designs when you're gel printing. The first one, I've created myself a tool using one of my acrylic blocks, which I now need to soak <laughs> to get the uh, paint off it. But it was already all painting anyway, because I use it when I stamp with acrylic paint as well. And I can just soak it in some simple green and water overnight, and all that will come off of it. So what I did was I wrapped some inexpensive um, embroidery thread around it, and then I'm using that as a tool to create marks on my gel plate. So I'm putting paint down. This is acrylic paint. And today I'm just working on using up a lot of my bottles of Liquitex Basics. Mostly that's what it is. There might be some Artist Loft and some Amsterdam. But they're uh, student grade medium body acrylic paint in a tube. That's the kind that I like to use on my gel plate because I live in Arizona and it it, um, it's creamy enough to not dry out on me before I get the prints pulled. The paper that I'm using is 80 pound smooth white cardstock, solar white from Nina. And uh, the reason I'm using this, I'm actually printing the back sides of the half sheets that I made the other day. Sorry, apparently my uh, auto focus is on. I got a new um, scratch and dent refurb laptop because my laptop it's it had a problem with these updates and it was just too old and I, I couldn't get it to work and I was whining and so my best friend ordered me <laughs> a new laptop. So getting used to new stuff is always tricky. But anyway, that was my first technique. Wrap some string or rubber bands around a block and use it to make linear or grid designs on your gel plate. There was some samples. My next one, I made myself a kind of a basket weave tool by using a cardboard from a envelope and cutting it with an X-Acto knife and then weaving the strips in and out. I lost a lot of footage on this one thanks to my not realizing that uh, my laptop was going to turn off in 10 minutes, and and when it turns off, it stops filming. <laughs> I had to change that setting on the laptop. See, these are just things that happen. So with this tool, um, I was able to make some pretty cool stuff. And the, I first tried a light color paint. This is um, light rose from Amsterdam. And then I filled it in with some bright, some bright colors. I'm using a 12 by 12 plate as well as a six by six and the reason I don't know if I said it already the reason I'm doing this is because I have these half sheets of, of uh, printed papers that I made um, the other day when I was gel printing using uh, monochromatic colors and I used some of them to make my little village my little folded up house 3d village and I had leftovers and I decided that I would use the leftovers to make a journal a gel print journal that I can use in November in November at art joy of sharing we have a art journaling every day called art journal habit and we have one word prompts and I make a video every day for that so I wanted to get my um my journal ready and I wanted it to be small pages because making a video every day is a lot of work and so I don't want to make huge pages I want to make small pages I like to work on top of gel prints it makes me happy um, the colors are already there and I can work with whatever prompt it is over the top so that is what I'm making with these pages and then I ended up making some other pages as well because you know you got cleanup and you got whatever so 
This one I liked a lot better. I used the tool over some black paint and then put bright colors over it and it came out really cool and you'll see. Um, I'll let it dry a little bit and then I picked the whole thing up with some light paint. And then on my 6x6, which I sometimes use for a palette and sometimes I use it for excess paint, um, I have more of like a print that doesn't have a lot of pattern but it has a lot of color. So, um, that tool that I made is really fun and it, all it was was just some woven paper not well not paper it's it's um, when when I get uh, stencils from stencil club and from stencil girl they come in these kind of cardboard mailers and I have a lot of them and they're just they're great for making stuff it's a, the right um, weight to have some body and to be able to work with it without it being too thick so yeah in I enjoy most with this tool that I made with woven paper. I enjoy putting the dark color down and then lifting it up with the tool and then putting lighter colors over the top and letting them shine through. It uh, makes really interesting design. So that's what I'm doing. And this time I was able to do it on both pieces, I think. Um, I tried using the tool to make a mark. So, okay, I'm putting it over here. I'm lifting up paint on the big print with a big gel plate then I try to put it down on the small gel plate and whatever paint is on there should transfer off to the small gel plate but that cardboard stuff is um, absorbent enough that it doesn't didn't really work as a like a stamp you know a mark making tool it works to lift up the paint so what I preferred with this one is dark paint on the on the large plate and then lifting it up leaving the pattern and then putting the lighter paint over the top. So that is um, linear or grid patterns using woven uh, heavy heavy card. I guess I'm going to call it that. So the next one that I have coming up is using different types of tape. And I did a lot of different ones. I used masking tape, I used packing tape, and I used cellophane, cellophane tape which is basically scotch tape. And the masking tape, I got a couple prints, but it didn't work very well. Um, the, the top of the masking tape isn't uh, smooth. It's bumpy and you know what, it, what masking tape is like, and it didn't lift off well. So I got a lot of the lines in between, but the paint I poured over the top did not lift up well. So the packing tape and the cellophane tape worked better although the packing tape was the best because the cellophane tape I keep wanting to say cell phone cellophane tape scotch tape it wants to lift up it wants to get stuck to the other paper and I kept having problems with doing that but I think it makes an interesting real like grungy effect like um the cellophane tape is smooth on the top, so it be kind of becomes its own um, monoprinting plate because the, the paint should come off it when you print. But I just kept having problems with it wanting to come up off the plate. <laughs> so, yeah. This print I'm making right here on the 6x6 with some of the leftover paint after I peeled the tape off. And by the way, I'm going to use the tape and make it into um, interesting, colorful, washi style tape eventually. Um, but yeah, on the 6x6, by putting the brown over the top, that print is really cool. So you'll see it in a second. I thought that one turned out really cool. It's grungy. Interesting and grungy. So then on the larger plate, I put down some of the packaging tape. Now packaging tape is sticky so it stays on the plate better and doesn't try to lift up but what I didn't like about it is that it's fat and since I was doing half pages here um, I really don't, I don't get a lot of lines but it still looks interesting and it works better than the cellophane tape like the scotch tape so I need to try more different types of tape I think maybe a cloth tape would be interesting. I couldn't find mine. Um, <laughs> or maybe a different cellophane tape, like a cheaper one 
that's um, maybe from the dollar store. When I go to the dollar store next time, I will go and pick up some different tapes and see what other kind of linear designs I can get using different tapes. But I do have a ton of samples of the tape technique and that one right there was a different one. That's the next technique coming up. So these are a little bit out of order because I had to go back and remake some of it in order to show it because I lost the footage due to my ineptitude with my new laptop. Its settings are different. You know, I was used to my old settings. And so the fun thing to do with the cellophane, I mean the packing tape, is to put down a dark color, put the packing tape over the top and actually the cellophane tape I did this too and then put different colors on top that are coordinating but are kind of um, you know light medium and dark of a different color things that go together but are not the same and then if there's too much of it on there and it's not drying you can let, lift it up a little bit lift up some of it and then once it's dry ish you can put another color on top and lift the, you know, lift it off the tape and a little bit off the plate underneath um, with a pole that's using a light color on the top like you've seen me do a million times. It makes a multi-color, multi-layer look on your paper. So I didn't get it all off, so I decided to try again, but the tape is not as forgiving as the plate. And the second time I tried to pull it up off the tape, it didn't come off. So I just went ahead and uh, put more paint on. And I think if I was to continue putting more and more paint on, I'd get more and more interesting grungy looks um, because a little bit of the paint would come off and some of it wouldn't. And then the next time you'd get a little bit more. But you get an idea of what it looks like as far as uh, linear design. It looks it looks like kind of like fence sort of um, painted fence that's peeling. So then once I pulled the tape off now I have this leftover paint that I can pick up. Um, so I decided to use some different warm tones to pick up that paint. An orange, a red, and a yellow. Just adding those on um, in a thin layer over the top and then using that to pick up the brown underneath which makes an interesting effect. I don't tend to print with just one color. I tend to layer one color over another over another. It didn't pull it all up, so I went ahead and put some of that Naples yellow over the top and did another print. Pulled up some more of it. And these prints are all together in one of the pictures, so you can see how they all kind of, they're all from the same paint and the same it's like maybe four or five different ones from the same paint, which are interesting. It's not these though. The one there on the right is uh, masking tape, one of the few I got, and the other three were, three were cellophane tape. These are uh, packaging tape, and then more packaging tape ones. I guess I didn't put them all together. Oh well. And then those are packaging tape and masking tape. So, yeah. Next technique to make linear or grid designs is folded paper. And I'm using the scoring tool on my cutter, cutter to score some lines and then fold the paper. And I, I did a couple other ones before this. A lot of the samples that you'll see at the end are made with the other ones. The first one I did was one inch scores and I folded it like an accordion. The next one I did was um, half inch or maybe even a quarter inch folds very, very close together. So depending on, on how you fold it is how far away your lines are gonna be from each other. Now this one, I wanted to make fatter lines and I thought that if I folded it and then let it come up and across and down, I would get fatter pieces. Instead of getting a real thin line, I would get a fat line when I use it as a mark tool. So that did actually work. Um, I didn't get as many of them as I, lines across as I wanted <laughs> because I had to go up, over, down, under, up, over, down, under. You know what I'm getting at? 
kind of like making little boxes. But it does make fatter lines for the mark making because there's more paper exposed that's lifting up the paint. So you can put it up and down all the way across. There's the one with the one inch thinner um, lines. Or you can make a plaid or a grid out of it. Just fun to make these type of designs on your gel prints. Another option would be stencils, but I was trying to show ways that didn't involve stencils because not everybody has a grid stencil. So then I'm putting some different colors down over the darker color that I put underneath and picking up on half sheets. At this point, I'd already printed my entire cardstock book and was going back and showing the technique again. So, yeah, it was a huge amount of footage, about an hour of footage I lost. But that's okay. <laughs> it's taken me all day to make this video. But <laughs> that's what happens when you lose footage. Sometimes, sometimes you don't even know what happened. It just disappears and you're like, where did it go? And other times you know, you know what you did wrong, what mistake you made. But you can't go back and, you know, fix it. So you have to just start over. So the ones I'm doing on the 6x6 plate are on deli paper, and I'm doing four, four of them because it's 12x12 12 12 deli paper. And then, of course, the other ones are on regular um, paper from the printer that I just folded in half to make half sheets, which I actually found that I liked um, making this size, like a 55 by 85 is a pretty nice size for use and storage. So this time I used my really small accordion fold paper that has I think a quarter inch scoring on it and then I also used on some of it my one inch scoring one just so you can sh just to show you what it is to show you what I did. It's the fourth technique folding paper and using it for mark making on your gel plate. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave, leave me a comment or a question below. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells. And of course, you can share this on Pinterest. Pin it to your gel printing technique board or something like that if you want. That is always helpful. I'll pin it to my gel printing technique board. There is a challenge from uh, Bridget Coopson coming up. Next month, um, she's got prompts for gel printing every single day. And I did it last year, and it was a lot of videos. I don't know if I'll do it or not. Just have to see. But also, of course, go check out the hashtag Magnificent Melange and find all types of techniques from the contributors at the Art Joy of Sharing Art community. That is it for me. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.